It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hi, and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy, and this is my lovely assistant, Miss Callie Alice. Look at, she got the wobbler ears on. Yo, see the Cadbury dog today, because this is our Easter <laughs> special. Here, Callie, say hello to everybody. Ooh, yo, sitting pretty. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, it's our Easter special today. We have lots of treats to make, so we better get going. First of all, I have my eggs cooling in the sink right now. Uh, we're going to decorate uh, Easter eggs the old-fashioned way. And we'll be giving you the recipe for that. And it's, uh, uh, make sure you're under adult, close adult supervision when you're doing this with your kids because you're going to have the hot water and vinegar and we don't want them to get burned. I'm still alive. It didn't hurt me any. And we're going to take and make a Portuguese Easter egg bread. Now you've heard of the other egg breads, which is braided and the eggs are in it. Well, this is very similar, but it's almost like a little individual basket for each egg. So it's going to be kind of cute and rather fun. So let's get, let's get cooking right away. We have more things to do yet too today. So first of all, we need uh, one cup of warm milk, one cup of sugar, one stick of butter, and one teaspoon of kosher salt. And we put that in the mixer, we blended this together. Now in here I've got my yeast, which is a quarter cup of warm milk and two packages of rapid rise dry yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. This is going in to our mixture here. Ooh, Cali Alley here. Oh. Now this yeast takes about when you mix it together, it's going to take about five to ten minutes in order for it to rise, to get dissolved and be activated. So we got the yeast in there, and now we need three eggs, and you want to make sure these are at room temperature, because we don't want to take and deactivate that yeast, that's the important thing. That's why all your ingredients should be at room temperature. So just mix this up very well, and we can pour that right into our mixture. And now we'll mix this up together, blend it together. And to this mixture now, we're going to be adding about five to six cups of flour. I'm just going to do half of that flour first. So we'll just put in three cups. Now we'll blend this together for about two to three minutes. Okay, that's mixed up. And we'll just scrape off the beater here, because now we're going to switch to our dough hook. And now we're going to put in approximately two to possibly three more cups of flour. So we're going to put this on low and we'll add our flour a little bit at a time here until it starts, uh, there's no more flour there and it doesn't cling to the sides of the bowl anymore. That's how you can tell when you have enough flour. Here we go. And now we'll let this knead for about five to eight minutes until it's smooth and elastic. Okay, now we take this out of the mixer and we're going to need this for about another minute or two more. Until then we just form this into a ball. Now that's nice and smooth. You get a workout doing it. And then we just pour in, oh just a look, about a teaspoon or so of oil. And you want to grease your oil, your oil your bowl very well. And then we just take and put our bread in there, our dough, roll it around so it's completely covered. That helps to keep it from drying out. Oh, it samples. Oh. Oh, she had a sample. She's been waiting here, waiting, waiting, waiting. And I just had this Tupperware container which works fabulously. Because it keeps the heat in, keeps it the cold draft from making it fall. You want to keep this in a warm place to rise. Well, the best thing, another thing to do if you don't have this is just take and wrap it with saran wrap. And that works excellent. It's really good. But I'm just going to set this on my stove because I got heat coming out of the oven in the back there. Just a low heat. Don't want it too high. If your dough rises too fast and too hot a heat, 
That's how you get all those little bubbles and air pockets inside your dough. And we want a smooth consistency. We don't want all those lava holes. And that's from the yeast rising too fast. So you don't want it too hot either. Because we're going to let this rise now for about 90 minutes. And while that's cooking, we can go on to our next recipe. Okay, now we're going to decorate our Easter eggs. I've got my eggs already dried off. I had them on a colander and just let them sit there. After they were chilled off, now they're all dry. Now for our colors. I got the little box of neon food coloring, which makes fabulous, vibrant Easter egg colors. And I got four different colors. That's all I'm going to do. I don't need to have a half a million different colors. It all, you know, it all depends on what you want to do. It's very easy. All you do is put in one teaspoon of vinegar, 10 drops of food coloring, and a half a cup of water. Now with this, of course, you want to make sure that you have adult supervision so your kids aren't going to get burnt. And it's just a half cup of water because you don't want to fill your cups all the way, remember, because you're going to put your egg in there. And you don't want to overflow. And that's why, make sure that you have newspaper on your countertop because these egg colorings do stain very heavily. But anyway, so there you do is just take a spoon and just lay it on your spoon and just lay that, let that roll in gently. Now we're going to take a different spoon for each color. We just want to mix the colors up together for approximately five minutes. And that's going to get a nice deep color. If you want it deeper and darker, then you just leave it set longer as well. It's that simple. And remember to keep your egg cartons, because when you take these out to dry completely, you just put them right in the egg cartons and they'll dry right into these egg cartons. They'll, they work fabulously. And these are our Easter eggs. Callie, come here. Callie. What? Okay, and these are our Easter eggs. These are all done now. We can save these for the Easter Bunny. The Callie Bunny, yeah. The Cali Bunny can deliver these. Oh, yeah. And these are my raw ones. And these are the ones that are uncooked. Now, these are going to go into oh, the Cali Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> into our dough, into our baskets here. So now we punch this down. And we're going to take and divide this in half. And we're going to divide. These, we're going to make these into 12s. Okay, and now these we just roll into our buns. Let's roll them into buns. Okay, so now I got my six rolls, and we're going to take and uh, make an indentation on, in the center of each egg, of each roll, I mean. And we just nest the eggs right inside there. Now be careful now, these are uncooked eggs, so you don't want to be popping them around. You don't want to break them and get egg all over the place. And then you want to take your other six pieces, one for each roll, and I take and cut them in half and then roll them out into a thin strip. These are going to be the basket handles. And we're going to crisscross these and then tuck them under the roll. And you want these to be on a little on the thinner side because you want to be able to see the egg. You don't want it really thick. And then take and place the end of the handle underneath the bun. And we do it that on both sides. That's why I got these a little extra long. That's okay. Just cut that off. And then just pinch it underneath there so that it adheres to the bun. And then these are going to be our Portuguese Easter egg uh, bread. Easter bread. So they look like that. And then we just do that for the rest of them. And these are our egg baskets, as you can tell. I got the, um, the dough crisscrossed over these. Like so, and then you take and just pinch them together underneath like this. And these are the Portuguese Easter bread. Now we're going to take and let these rise. We'll have these slightly covered and we'll let these rise until they're doubled again for about another half hour, 45 minutes. 
Okay, now we take and we do a little egg wash, which is one egg mixed with one teaspoon of water. Now we're going to take and brush these over our buns, our little baskets. So we're going to get all the dough moistened. And I'm just going to rearrange that a little bit. And now we have a preheated oven at 350 degrees. And then we'll put these in and bake them off. And it's not going to take very long to cook, cook the egg. And we'll cover these loosely with aluminum foil to retain the heat. And we'll check them in about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, it should be tops. Because it's not going to take very long for these to cook at all. And then we'll put these in the oven and we'll take them out and we'll have our Portuguese Easter bread. <laughs>